Drinking from the spring of living water every Monday during the Bible study of the Deeper Christian Life Ministry is such an enriching experience that affords you an unforgettable encounter with God and His Word. The vibrant general superintendent of the ministry, Pastor W.F. Kumuyi, is a renowned minister and teacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, having traveled worldwide for the propagation of the gospel. Each contact with his ministration gives you the privilege of joining our first year and expectant congregation to receive the bread of life, which satisfies the body, soul, and spirit through anointed messages filled with unction of the Holy Ghost. This message will transform you and help to deepen your walk with God and your service to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sit back as we present to you the unchanging Word of God through His minister, whose entire life revolves around the preaching of the gospel of salvation and purity of life in preparation for life here and hereafter. Let's welcome Pastor W.F. Kumui. Heavenly Father, we bless your name for bringing us to our Bible study tonight. Thank you, Lord, because although we come every Monday, every week, yet it has not become stale. And it's fresh day by day. Lord, we pray that your spirit once again will make this world to come alive as we study together in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, Lord, you energize, empower, equip every one of us as we study the word together tonight in Jesus' name. That the strength we need for the race ahead of us, the power we need to be able to overcome every challenge coming our way, and the wisdom we need to be able to avoid the pitfalls of life and to stand firm until the very end. You grant to every one of us in Jesus' name. For fathers and mothers and boys and girls and sons and daughters and leaders and workers and members and invitees, Lord, we pray this word will draw every one of us closer unto you in Jesus' name. Keep us awake and drive sleep from every one of us that we may get the best out of your watch tonight. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered us. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. God bless you. You can sit down. We're coming to a kind of rounding up study in Daniel chapter 4. In Daniel chapter 4, we've gone through quite a lot in this chapter. And tonight, we want to bring everything together and look at the purpose why we learn. And why we have seen and we have heard what we have heard. If you ask any one of our children going to school, primary school in particular, why are you coming to school? Those children do not know left from right. They don't know why they are going to school. Daddy dropped me here and said he's going to work. And I think Daddy just wants me to be in this place. Or Mommy wants me here until they come back from work. They don't understand what they're learning, the majority of them. Even if you ask those who are in the secondary school and you say, why are you coming to school? Why are you learning this and learning this and learning that? They do not have any clue, any idea why they are learning what they are learning. That's why you find some of those students in school that they just become like runaway children. They're not in class when they ought to be in class. They don't pay attention when they need to pay attention because they do not know that the things they're learning is preparing them for the future. And sometimes you'll find, even those of us who are adults, it may be that our company, our organization, sends us to a particular cause. And we we'll take it as normal, we we'll take it as usual. They give opportunities like that to workers in our corporation, in our organization. And it is my turn now. And if I do this, I'll come back, I'll be able to have promotion. They do not understand the reason why they go for the conference. They go to learn what they go to learn. For us who are coming to learn from the word of God, we must know why the lord has sent us here to learn and you must understand every time you come to the bible study i am here for a purpose the lord is preparing me for something he's teaching me something that's why he's brought me here we're looking at romans chapter 15 verse 4 
Romans chapter 15 verse 4. For whatsoever things were written a four time, Daniel is part of that. Daniel chapter 4 is a very major part of what things were written a four time. They were written for our learning. That take hold of that word. Learn. Learn. They were reaching for our learning that we, through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. It tells us then that these things we're learning, and these things we're reading, is for a purpose. We're to learn so that we will be able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And the knowledge of the truth we come to will then help us to be what we ought to be in life. And there was something that bothered, that concerned the Apostle Paul. Well, the people that were learning and hearing the word of God, and he expressed that concern in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 7 ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth what a deep concern and that will be a deep concern to any parent any father any mother that will be a deep concern to any principal in the school any teacher that will be a great concern to any proprietor of any school that he establishes the school and then he puts competent capable teachers there and those children are learning and they're never able to pass any exam it's a great a deep concern and for those who are preaching the word of god for those who are teaching monday after monday and Tuesday after Tuesday, or week after week, and we're learning from the Word of God, when we look at the lives of the people who are learning, it's a deep, it's a great concern. If there is no change, no transformation, no evidence of the things they're learning, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, we've read chapter 4. You know the story already. You could almost tell me from verse 1 to verse 37. What is contained in Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4 contains the judgment of God that came upon Nebuchadnezzar. That terrible judgment, that strange punishment that came upon him. The question is, why would we learn about the judgment why would we learn about the punishment that came upon a man long, long ago? What's my concern with that? What's your concern with that? Your concern is this, to learn something. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26. I'm reading from verse 9. With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are there, like we have read in Daniel chapter 4, when thy judgments are there, the inhabitants of the world will do what? Learn righteousness. That means then, as we see the dealings of God with Nebuchadnezzar, and we see the judgment that came upon him, the reason why that he preserved in the word of God, and the reason why we're reading it and analyzing it and explaining it and applying it to our lives, the reason for that is that the inhabitants of the world may learn righteousness. What else are we to learn when we see those things that come upon the unbelievers, upon the people that do not know the Lord? We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 31. Deuteronomy chapter 31. I want you to look at verse 12. Open your Bible and mark these verses of Scripture. Don't just uh, keep it in the outline and say, yes, it's in the outline. The outline might fly away. The wind might blow it away. But when you mark it in your Bible, you know it it's there and you can refer to it and all the time we're looking at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 31 I'm reading verse 12 gather the people together the men and the women and the children and thy stranger that is within thy gaze that they may hear and that they may learn and fear the Lord your God and observe to do all the words of this Lord have you noticed there it says, the men, let them be there. The women, let them be there. Even the children, let them all be there together. And what are they to do? They are to learn the watch of God. It says that they may hear. 
And that they may learn. What are they learning? That they may learn to fear the Lord your God. The reason why we're learning all this is so that we'll be able to learn to fear the Lord God Almighty. And to know that God is so great. And that His sword is very sharp. And that we cannot hold the sword by its blade. That if we do, it will cut us to pieces until we will not be recognized anymore. Look at verse 13. And that their children, which have not known anything, may hear and learn. Even their children, which have not known anything, as we read about Nebuchadnezzar, as we read about the judgments of God on the earth, as we read about God's attitude to pride and to evil, it says that even their children may learn to fear the Lord your God as long as ye live in the land, whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. We're told then that the reason why we're studying all this is so that we'll be able to learn. And as we learn, we're learning to fear the Lord because this is a great and mighty God. Deuteronomy chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 13 is still emphasizing the same thing, you know, when God says something over and over and over again. And He says, learn. And it says, hear it. And when you hear, learn from it. Take a lesson, an unforgettable lesson from what you learned, that you may learn to fear me all the days of your life. In Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 11, here is what it says. And all Israel shall hear. All Israel shall hear. All Israel, how, many, how many in Israel shall hear? Oh, I praise the Lord for those of you coming to the Bible study. But you know sometimes, uh, there are some people you see them on Sunday in our church. You don't see them on Monday. It's like they think, I, I don't need that. I've got enough. I've read enough. And I've heard all that you preach on Sunday. Why should I be there on Monday? And you know, if you were really to help people to love God more, to learn more, to fear God more, to be what they ought to be, you'll be encouraging the members of the church that all, everyone, will be able to come and you'll be able to learn. If you're a leader in the church, you'll not say, well, you know, the, the people of nowadays, they're so busy. I remember in our days when, you know, we were young, when we members of the church and not workers, we'll be running to the Bible study. But you know, the young people of nowadays, and and the members of the church nowadays, this is the way they are. And it's too much looking into this and getting this and getting that. If you're a leader in the church, you'll not have an attitude like that. You'll do your very best to get all the people of God together. That all the people of God will come. And then they will learn. Look at verse 11. And all Israel shall hear and fear and shall do no more evil, no more any such wickedness as this is among you. You see the reason why we are to learn so that the fear of God will be in our hearts. We'll say, ah, he dealt with Nebuchadnezzar that way. I've had that. I've learned that. I fear the Lord. I will not allow that to come upon me. Deuteronomy chapter 17 verse 13. 17 verse 13. It says in verse 13, and how many people? Tell me out loud. Uh, you see this, we're failing God. If we just come alone to the Bible study and we say, the, the people, the other, they had the announcement on Sunday, there's Bible study on Monday, why don't they come? Make an effort. Help people. Encourage people. Lead them on. To be able to obey the Lord more. In verse 13, all the people shall hear and do what? And fear and do no more presumptuously. Look at verse 19 of that same chapter 17. And it shall be with him that he shall read therein all the days of his life. That he may learn to fear the Lord is God. That's the reason why we're learning. It's not just to learn and then to just say, well, I learned something today. Let it affect your life. And let it make you fear the Lord. And let it make you consciously want to obey the Lord. That he may learn to fear. 
the Lord is God to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them. Deuteronomy chapter 19 verse 20. Chapter 19 verse 20. It says, And those which remain shall hear and fear and shall henceforth commit no more any such evil among you. It's very clear then as we look at the word of God. That the reason why we're studying the word of God is that we will hear, we will learn, we will fear the Lord our God. And we're coming to you now, we're coming to Daniel chapter 4. I've shown you the reason why we're all here. Why I am here, why you are here, why we are all here together. We want to learn. And as we learn, then we'll fear the Lord our God. We're looking at Daniel chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 30. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. And they shall make thee eat grass, and as all sin, and seven times shall pass over thee. Until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth thee to whomsoever he will. The same hour, the same hour was the sin fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men and did eat grass as all sin. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his ears were grown like eagles' feathers. And his nails like birds' claws. And then it says in verse 34, At the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven. Did he learn something? I said, did he learn something? Yes, he did. What did he learn? Look at verse 35. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the armies of heaven. And among the inhabitants of the earth, none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? Now in verse 37, I in Nebuchadnezzar, I praise, I extol, I honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment. And those that walk in pride, what did he learn? Is able to a base. Now, we're dividing the message of three parts tonight. Number one, a clarion call to fear God the Most High. A clarion call. That's what clarion means, loud and clear. A call that is loud and clear to fear God the Most High. Number two, a clear command to fear God the Most High. Number three, continual condemnation for not fearing God the Most High. Number one, a clarion call to fear God the Most High. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10. There is a call coming from heaven. There's a call coming from the messengers of God that we ought to fear God the Most High. Jeremiah chapter 10, reading from verse 7. It says, Who would not fear thee, O king of nations? For to thee doth it appertain. For as much as among all the wise men of the nations and in all their kingdoms, there is none like unto thee. He says, who will not fear you? Who will stop only hiding himself against you? Because you are the king of nations and there is none like thee. Verse 10, but the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and everlasting king. At his wrath the earth shall tremble. And the nations shall not be able to abide his indignation. Well, Nebuchadnezzar got a first hand knowledge of that, but personal experience. That's the reason why we have that great call, clear call, loud call, clarion call to fear the Lord our God. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 22. Jeremiah 5, 
verse 22 it says fear not ye me says the lord the lord is surprised that an ant can be bold and hardened against an elephant the lord is so much surprised that a rat will stay in front of a lion and put bold and courageous and audacious and the lord god almighty the creator of the heavens and the earth before whom all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing is asking a great question is saying in that verse 22 fear ye not me says the lord will ye not tremble at my presence which have placed the sand for the bounds of the sea by perpetual decree that it cannot pass it and though yet and though the waves thereof toss themselves yet can they not prevail though they roar yet can they not pass over it the lord is telling us then that the path of wisdom for every human being the path of wisdom for every descendant from adam is that will fear the lord in revelation chapter chapter 15 revelation chapter 15 i mean in from verse 4 revelation 15 verse 4 here we're told who shall not fear thee o lord and glorify thy name who shall not fear thee is there a pharaoh is there nebuchadnezzar is there, is there belshazzar is there herod that will not fear the lord he will taste the wine cup of his wrath and indignation who shall not fear thee o lord and glorify thy name for thou only art holy for all nations shall come and worship before thee for thy judgments are made manifest thy judgments you see the reason for fearing god because the judgments of god are made plain are made clear are made manifest it tells us in revelation chapter 14 revelation chapter 14 verses 6 and 7 and i saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people was the angel with this everlasting gospel was he declaring to the people verse 7 saying with a loud voice fear god and give glory to him fear god and give glory to him it's, it's not only the uh, the preachers or the prophets of the old testament and the new testament even the angel of god in heaven having this everlasting gospel to declare unto all the inhabitants of the earth he says fear god and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and you see the judgment is linked to 